Hello, my fellow wizards. If you want any of the oh-so-desirable drops from the 11 current stone skeleton key bosses in Wizard 101, you'll need a solid supply of keys, which is often easier said than done with a massive list of potential ways to get them. So today, I'm here with the ultimate stone skeleton key guide, where I'll cover every single way to get stone skeleton keys while highlighting which methods I find are the quickest and easiest. Never get locked out of your favorite stone key boss again. First, let's cover the premium crowns options, because why work for your keys when you can just buy them? Historically, KI has offered the occasional skeleton key bundle in the crown shop for limited periods of time, though not with any real consistency, so it can be hard to predict when they might next add similar bundles to the crown shop. However, if you keep your eyes open, you may be able to purchase gold, stone, and wooden keys if you can't stand the thought of farming any longer. I obviously don't generally recommend wasting real money on stuff that you can get through other methods, but hey, this one is for the whales out there. Y'all are keeping this game afloat with your credit cards. With that out of the way, next are a bunch of different bosses you can farm for a chance to get some stone skeleton keys, so I'll be dividing them into different categories for ease of reference. First, let's talk about skeleton keys that actually drop from skeleton key bosses themselves. Yes, often the same bosses you need a key to challenge can drop you a replacement skeleton key, which is nice if you're doing a ton of loot farming. Obviously, if you don't have any keys to begin with, these aren't going to be a great choice because you basically need a key to get a key. But if you're in the middle of farming, it's always nice to get an extra run or two for free when they drop you a replacement key. Starting with the wooden skeleton key bosses, there are actually three that could give you a stone skeleton key as a drop. Two of them can be found quite early on in Krakatopia by going into the library from the Oasis and heading through the passage to the right. At the end of the hallway, you'll find the boss Sapoti in the key chamber to the left, and the other boss Ra all the way at the end. Both these wooden skeleton key bosses are pretty easy fights and are still popular farming spots, especially for low-level wizards eager to try out their first key bosses. There are no level limitations to fight them, so if you get the opportunity, it may be worth trying, with a chance that you'll get a stone skeleton key as a bonus. The third wooden skeleton key option is technically not a boss, but instead a chest you can open by accessing the lower zigzag wooden key room. You can normally get to the lower zigzag dungeon by getting the level 60 quest to talk to Alhazred and progressing it until you can access the upper zigzag area of Krakatopia by using this statue in the balance school. From there, you'll get a quest to lower zigzag and later the House of Scales dungeons. Upon entering lower zigzag, you'll find this wooden skeleton key door behind the second set of caged manders about halfway through the dungeon. Inside is a chest with loot where you could have a chance at getting a stone skeleton key drop. Moving on to the stone skeleton key bosses themselves, there are eight that are confirmed to potentially drop a replacement stone key. Starting at the top, we have the Aether Elemental, which is located in the Northeast Arrow Plains near the bridge. If you hit this monstrosity of a minigame in Velo City, you've gone too far. But seriously, my main complaint with this boss is that it takes for freaking ever to cross both the Northeast and Southwest Arrow Plains. I know it looks pretty, but could we get like a bullet train or something, please? I can watch half a Netflix episode in the time it takes to get there. is Belash, located near the end of the third level in the House of Scales dungeon, not to be confused with his cousin, Belloc, who you may remember as being this annoying boss in Zafaria, who spams the spell raw like he's getting paid in wizard tears. Anyway, Belash may have the same exact annoying cheat as Belloc, but at least when you beat him, you might get yourself a stone skeleton key replacement. Speaking of Zafaria, our next boss is Captain Hawkins, who can be found in this building to the left side of the waterfront. Just like Belash, you'll need to be ready to spam him like crazy to get around his cheats, but in exchange, you may get an extra stone key or two. Now, if we head back to Wizard City, you may also get some extra keys if you choose to fight Felspawn, who can be found in this bottom left portion of the catacombs, which can be accessed from the drains in Gollum Court. I definitely recommend a team for this guy due to his difficulty, but if you're brave enough to fight him solo, you can get an extra cool badge for pulling it off, amongst many other challenge badges. He's annoying enough that he literally made it on my top 10 hardest badges video, if that's any indication. Shifting back to Krakatopia, there is also the boss in Zizor who could be found in the lower zigzag dungeon mentioned earlier. Instead of entering the wooden skeleton key door, you'll instead head across this bridge in the upper right of the area where you'll find his stone key door. While offering a stone key replacement, he is also known for dropping the stylish book wands, which I have another video covering if you're interested. Next up is Simon the Sayer, a stone key boss tucked away in the side dungeon of Sunken City, which can be accessed from Nightside where the death school is found. Once inside, head straight ahead and to the left to find Simon's door, where you'll have to beat him in a game of Simon Says to get a chance at his drops. 
Jumping to Caramel, we have the Stay Puffed Marshmallow in this corner of the Nibelheim Mines. This one is definitely also easier with a group since you'll have to play a very violent version of Hot Potato and maybe get a stone key drop as well as some marshmallow on a stick wands. Time to do some roasting. Finally is the Verboten Mimic, which can be found across this bridge in the River District of Agrabah and Mirage. The Mimic's whole deal is mimicking, so it's a pity that it never turns into anyone that interesting in this fight, unless you like future Baldy McGee here. Oh well, missed opportunity, KI, is all I'm saying. Who doesn't want to get beaten up by one of these baddies instead? Future update, anyone? Finally, let's talk about all the gold skeleton key bosses that can drop stone skeleton keys upon defeat. For those that don't know, I actually have a super in-depth guide for all these bosses and their many amazing drops if you're interested, which will be in the description, so if you want more info, definitely check that out. Since that dedicated video is available, I'll speed pretty quickly through this section. There's Baron Von Bracken, who can be found behind this door in Tanglewood Way in Wisteria. Drowned Dan, who can be found in the central chamber in the Arboretum of the Science Center in Celestia. High Lore Magus, who basically replaced the old Lore Master boss and is now found on the left-hand side of the library in the Anthenium of Dragonspire. Ixkak's Cursed Wing, whose new sigil is found to the far back left side in Three Points in Azteca. And King Boar, who is found in the cave behind the waterfall in Saffristid Pass. There's also Krampus, who is a Yuletide season-only boss who can be found in multiple areas but is easiest to access behind the ice tree, Kelvin in Ravenwood. Lady Stonegaze, who is found to the right and down the path from the entrance to Aquila in this building just before you reach the entrance to Atlantia. There's also Lambent Fire, who can be found in this sigil near the entrance to the Crystal Caves and Avalon, which can be accessed from the Catacombs. There's the Spirit of Ignorance, who can be found immediately to the right upon entering Crab Alley from Triton Avenue. And finally, Takanobu the Masterless, who can be found straight down from the Fish Teleport in the Cave of Solitude area in Mushu. Again, if you want all the specifics on these bosses, their cheats and drops, and how to get gold skeleton keys, I definitely recommend checking out my other thorough guides on the subject. But hopefully you'll get some stone skeleton keys as an added bonus while farming them. Okay, now that we've covered all the key bosses that can drop stone keys, we can finally cover the regular bosses that drop them. With these guys, there's no entry requirement besides potentially your level and quest progression, so these will likely be your bread and butter for farming stone skeleton keys consistently with no other strings attached. Focusing first on Avalon, there's a surprising number of bosses here that can drop stone keys, but some are definitely better than others. Starting with some dragons, there's the Bane Worm who can be found behind the waterfall in Caliburn, as well as Karanok the Fire Spitter in this cave to the far left in the High Road. There's also the Jabberwock if you head straight ahead and to the right from the High Road entrance from Caliburn, and Pendragon, one of the final bosses in the Keep of Ganelon dungeon, which can be accessed from the Outer Yard. Other Avalon bosses include the three White Talon sisters, Kayla, Keela, and Kiva in the White Owl Tower in the wild, and finally Young Morganth in Ghost Avalon off the Crystal Caves. Of these many options, I'd definitely say Jabberwock and the White Owl Tower are your best bets for easy farming of stone keys. The Jabberwock has no minions and can be consistently killed within a few rounds if you take advantage of his cheats. At the end of every third round, he cheat casts a Meteor Strike that can deal 1500 damage but places a 200% Universal Trap on himself immediately afterward. Thus, if you buff yourself and tank the damage from the Meteor, you can get an easy, massive hit on him on the fourth round, hopefully killing him even if you're soloing. With a group, you can farm him even faster by fainting him and attacking within a round or two to wipe him out before he can even cheat. The only other things to keep in mind is that he has fire immunity unless you have decent pierce, so fire wizards may want to prison him before attacking. Otherwise, this boss is easily accessible and beatable by both solo players and groups, making him a great option for key farming. If you want an alternative, however, I can also recommend the White Owl Tower, where each of the three Owl Sisters have a chance to drop a stone skeleton key. Keela is a life boss and the first enemy you'll fight, which is followed by a puzzle room where you have to create an antidote potion following the recipe in the book. If you accidentally or purposefully fail this puzzle, however, you can fight Kayla White Talon, a balance boss. Finally is Kiva White Talon, an ice boss who acts as the last fight in the dungeon before freeing Sir Dresden. Upon defeating her, she will leave behind a second chance chest for an additional chance at her loot too. These three bosses are a great option because all three can drop a stone skeleton key and there are no filler fights with minions to slow down your farming. They're fairly easy to defeat as bosses go as well, with no cheats to worry about, making them ideal for soloing or group farming. However, if you're really not feeling Avalon, there are still many options available to you for stone key farming. While Darkmoor used to be a popular place to farm gold skeleton keys before they were removed from the drop pools in the summer 2022 update, the final boss, Malister the Undying, still just drops stone skeleton keys. 
To access them, you'll need to have unlocked the final Darkmoor dungeon, the graveyard, and fight past several other bosses before reaching him, which can admittedly be difficult when half the people dip after the first fight. However, if you're farming Malister anyway for his much desired level 100 gear, then you may get some stone skeleton keys as a bonus. Moving on to another semi-popular gear farming location, we're headed back to Upper Zigzag where bosses from both the House of Scales and Lower Zigzag dungeon mentioned earlier can drop stone skeleton keys as well as some fantastic level 60 offensive gear that act as alternatives to waterworks and winter tusk crafted gear. In the House of Scales dungeon, there are three bosses that can drop stone keys. Ist is the first boss in the dungeon located on the third level near the stone skeleton key room for Belosh mentioned earlier. Apep the Snaky One is the 5th level, and Amit the Devourer is the final boss on the 6th level. Unfortunately, all three bosses do have cheats and are broken up between various minion fights that can make this dungeon drag on a while. However, with players also trying to farm this dungeon for their level 60 gear, you're more likely to find a group to help you get through everything quickly, which is nice. I still think there are other better farming options on this list, but with three bosses in one dungeon, this isn't a terrible choice for grinding out keys if you also want that sweet level 60 gear, which honestly does look really cool. Well, besides the hat. <laughs> Lower Zigzag, on the other hand, has two bosses to farm for stone keys, Cuspid and Malars. Cuspid is found in the Toll House partway through the dungeon, whereas Malars is the final fight located in the tent at the end. Both do have cheats to watch out for, but are otherwise not overly difficult, and as mentioned earlier, you can also find the wooden key treasure chest here, as well as the stone key boss in Zizor. Finally are some bosses that I want to include on this list for sake of completeness, but I will say they're not the most viable options for a reason I'll explain in a moment. There are some bosses that are part of specific school quests, like spell quests, or in this case, pet quests, that are only accessible during that quest and cannot be repeated. For some reason, K.I. decided that some of these bosses should have the chance to drop stone keys in the worst dice roll ever, where if you don't get what you want, you just gotta suck it up because that was your only chance. In Zafaria, there are two such bosses, Idris Beast Taker and Razor Jack. Idris Beast Taker is found in Stone Town and can be accessed by Myth Wizards during their level 78 pet quest, Eyes of the Dragon. And he also suspiciously looks exactly like Belosh and Belloc for some reason. According to the wiki, the boss is technically repeatable, but only while the quest is still active and hasn't been turned in, at which point you can't fight him anymore. Razor Jack, found in the Zamunda outskirts, functions similarly but for life wizards instead, where they'll get access during their level 78 pet quest, the Green Mile. As long as the quest has been turned in, you can keep farming him, and apparently other wizards might be able to teleport into the fight if they TP to the life wizard with the quest, but obviously I haven't been able to test this myself. Finally is Skaranax Doomscale, found in Dragonspire Academy, who is accessible to balance wizards during their level 78 pet quest, literally called IT with an exclamation point. It's not totally clear if this fight is repeatable like the others if you haven't turned in the quest yet, but if anyone has the quest and can experiment, definitely let me know. If it wasn't clear, given that these bosses can only be accessed during very specific pet quests and then only while the quest is active, I do not recommend farming them for stone keys, but hey, if you want to go wild, you go for it. Last but not least, I have two final farming options for you, though they may not be the most ideal. If you happen to have the Unforgiven Dead Gauntlet, the final boss, Van Lua, does drop stone keys, but you have to fight a whole bunch of other enemies to reach them, which doesn't make for fast farming, and you need access to the gauntlet in the first place. I will say that the Unforgiven Dead Gauntlet does regularly drop some pretty great jewels and my favorite very rare wand stitch, but otherwise I can't really recommend this one for easy stone key farming. However, if you're interested in housing gauntlets, I do have an in-depth guide on them and all their drops, which I'll link below. Otherwise, your final option is kind of randomly the Meowyardi Rank 12 Archmage One-Shot Challenge Duel, which can either be bought for the crown shop for 500 crowns each or farmed from these bosses. This fight is generally for level 70 and up wizards and can drop some other interesting stuff, but I can't really recommend it for farming stone keys. Each challenge is one time use only, so you'd need to repeatedly farm for new challenge duels each time. At that point, you're farming challenge duels to farm stone keys, which just feels like adding extra steps for no reason. And in fact, many of the enemies you'd be farming for the challenge duel actually just drop stone keys anyway, so just don't waste your time with this one unless you're farming it anyway for the other loot that Meowie already drops. So which are your best options? Overall, if given the choice, I'd highly recommend fighting either the Jabberwock or the three bosses in the White Owl Tower for the easiest time farming for stone keys, though if you're farming for your level 60 gear in House of Scales or your level 100 gear in Darkmoor, there may be opportunities to hit two birds with one stone and farm for gear and keys at the same time with a higher chance at being able to team up. 
Obviously, it's always nice to get bonus or replacement keys when fighting various skeleton key bosses, but you can't rely on them to always drop keys and you have to use up other keys to access them. So to me, it's not worth wasting one valuable resource just to get another. Anyway, those are all the different ways to get stone skeleton keys in Wizard 101, as well as my personal favorite farming options. Let me know what your go-to spot is for stone skeleton keys and which ones are your least favorite in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing as it really does help me make more amazing Wiz content for you all. In addition, I now have new membership options available to those who want to find other ways to support me and the channel, which you can see by hitting the join button right under the video, so definitely check those out. As always, I hope to see you out there in the spiral and happy questing.